Welcome to Big Data Convention. And with me is Dr. David Siaraba, the Regional Director for SEAT. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good. You, you made a presentation on our SEAT mandate mission across Africa and across the globe. Yes. Can you tell us about it and what you, your organization is doing in terms of big data okay. in agriculture? Right, thank you. Uh, SEAT is one of the uh, 15 global international agricultural research institutions, collectively known as the CGIAR. We have our global headquarters in Colombia, Africa headquarters here in Kenya. Uh, SEAT operates in 10 countries. We have offices in 10 countries in Africa. We have programs in 36 countries. We work with over 600 partners across the continent uh, working on sustainable food systems. Uh, in Africa, we have four thematic areas where we operate. The first is leveraging markets for improved productivity and competitiveness. The second is agriculture for improved nutrition and health. The third is transforming farms and landscapes for sustainability. And the fourth one is investment planning for resilient agriculture. Um, so we do a lot in agriculture, uh, but specifically in the context of uh, ag tech, big data, and ag transformation in Africa, uh, we work with multiple partners in leveraging our know-how know and knowledge in improving decision-making, not just for uh, the private sector, which ranges all the way from the smallholder farmer to the large-scale agribusinesses, but also to the public sector, because it's important that uh, the public sector gets the information to make the right decisions for investment planning as well. Because, of course, you know, public resources uh, are scarce resources, and, of course, they need to be judiciously uh, invested and spent over you know, whatever political cycle the government has a mandate for. So we leverage science. We get funded by donors and partners to leverage our science and expertise uh, to ensure that we work with not just the public sector, but also the private sector. Oh, excellent. That's perfect. Given the uh, your presentation on ad tech and fintech, yeah. what's 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 your conclusion? What do you see as as a, as, a, as an upcoming change in in the next let's say five years? Okay. Well, uh, just to summarize the session that we just concluded, um, I would say my, my personal opinion is the future is very bright um, for the growth of not just the agricultural sector, but the growth of technology, the use of technology in the agricultural sector. Um, of course, you know we're in the digital age now, we're in the information age, and the fourth industrial revolution is the knowledge revolution. So we're, we're on the cusp of freeing up, you know, uh, gigabytes of data that we've generated, not just in the research uh, community, but also in the private sector. But ensuring that these data sets are able to speak to each other, to ensure that we achieve agriculture transformation across the continent. And so... You, are, you will find um, over the next five years, you know, a lot of experiments. And when I say experiments, I'm not talking about uh, hit and miss, but people will try different ideas, new ideas. And in the, in the sort of in the cauldron of these experiments, you will see like really innovative technologies blossom. Of course, in Kenya here, the home of M-Pesa, we've seen a transformation in electronic payments. We, we've already seen attempts by some of the countries to take that uh, and, and uh, import it into agriculture input systems and see how we bundle in uh, insurance into uh, agriculture input markets and payment systems. So there will be a complete revolution in the financial sectors and the growth and the uh, productivity and the marketing of agriculture inputs, agriculture products, processing food, consumer choices, consumer decisions, etc. Lots of opportunities right across the agriculture value chains. You will see a complete transformation over the next five years. Oh, excellent. Yeah, given that, uh, you mentioned about value chain and you, you place emphasis on, 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 on the year of big data and ICT. Yes. And I know you are passionate about young people. And Fortunately for me, I'm one of the youth delegates in youth and data delegates. And today I want to ask you, what's what's your plan? What's your vision for young people? Or what's your motivation? What do you what can you say for young people in, in agriculture? I will say this. Um, I want to see the youth who are really interested in thriving in agribusiness staying in agribusiness. And so agriculture is not the preserve of the poor. It's not the preserve of people who have failed in every sector. And so I want the serious minded people, the people who are serious about making uh, a career out of this, making a success out of this, staying in the sector. And so when we say we want uh, an enabling environment for the youth uh, to thrive in entrepreneurship and agribusiness, agripreneurs, agropreneurs, depending on how you call it, it's important that different partners, for example, with SIAT, the partners that we work with, we always apply um, uh, 
a prosperity lens and not a poverty reduction lens to the work that we do. And it's a complete uh, change of perspective because previously you would have a lot of organizations focused on reducing poverty. Our focus should not be on reducing poverty. Our focus should be on increasing prosperity. And so we should identify the opportunities where people can actually make business decisions and make careers in business and agribusiness, not just on, on the farm. Because again, if you think of the uh, profit distribution of, or the wealth distribution of agriculture value chains, the bottom of the pyramid at the production phase is where the least share of uh, revenue is generated. If the most share is generated higher up the value chain, so we want to see more youth moving up the value chain, moving into services sector, moving into processing, moving into distribution, moving into retailing, moving into the design of food products and services. So we don't just want to see uh, millions of youth on the farm. That's not the future of Africa's youth. The future of Africa's youth is higher up the value chain in more profitable agribusinesses that can take on the very best agribusinesses around the world. Wow, that's so nice. And you give a lot of young people out there the push to go forward across the value chain. It is our job to ensure that the youth thrive. So anything we can do as a research institution, we will do to support the youth in agriculture. For example, in Kenya, we also partner with Lipart. Yeah. Uh, I believe we're in the process of even hosting Lipart in Kenya. So uh, we have a very strong relationship with youth groups, youth organizations to ensure that we create these multiple entry points uh, for the youth beyond the, the, the farm level, but higher up the value chain. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Davis. Thank you. It's nice having you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.